Hi everyone, if you found the sign chart method to be too long-winded, I don't blame you. So let's try an easier method. Again, we're looking at f of x equals the square root of x squared minus 9. We want to know what the domain of f is. The domain of f will be exactly the solution set to this inequality, because this square root guy is real if and only if the radicand is non-negative. So we're solving this quadratic inequality. Well, in order to figure out uh, where this thing is positive versus negative, it would help to graph y equals x squared minus 9. Well, how do you graph y equals x squared minus 9? It's going to be a parabola. So let's do that. Let's graph y equals the radicand. Graph y equals x squared minus 9. Graph y equals x squared minus 9. And we're going to need to know the x-intercepts. Uh, where is y equal to 0? Where is this thing equal to 0? Here, you do want to add 9 to both sides. x squared equals 9, so x could be plus or minus 3. So when you graph y equals x squared minus 9, you should know that's a parabola opening upward. It's going to have x-intercepts at negative 3 comma 0 and 3 comma 0. Now let's analyze this thing. Again, what are we trying to do? We're solving this inequality. The task is to solve x squared minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. This parabola is the graph of y equals x squared minus 9. Remember, the graph of an equation consists of all points whose coordinates satisfy the equation. For each of these x-coordinates, in principle, you can read off the corresponding y-coordinate of the graph. All right, so where is x squared minus 9 what? Where is it non-negative? That means positive or zero. I want to know where the y-coordinate on this parabola, I want to know where the y-coordinate is positive or zero. Over here, on this blue piece here, the y-coordinates are positive. So I want these real values of x that give me these positive y-coordinates. I want this left tail over here. Do I want the negative 3? Well, yes, it's where the y-coordinate is 0. I do want where y, or x squared minus 9, is 0 in value. So I also want the negative 3. I want all these values for x. Do I want these values for x, including 0? Do I want these values for x? Well, these y-coordinates are negative in value. x squared minus 9 is negative over here. So no, I don't want that. This looks like a mouse, sort of. <laughs> Over here, the value for y, or x squared minus 9, is 0. Yes, I want that. I have the bar there. It's a weak inequality. And for these values of x, we get positive values for y. And I want where the y coordinate is positive, or 0. So I want all these values over here. Of course, this corresponds to the same set that we got from method 1. This is the solution set for the inequality over here, and it is the domain for this algebraic function, once again. Another way to see the relationship, let's graph y equals the radicand, x squared minus 9. All right. So over here, for these very negative values of x, uh, on the red graph, the y coordinate, the value of x squared minus 9 is positive, the square root of a positive is a real number, so we're good. These values of x are in the domain. We get a real result. Real y coordinates on the green graph. Remember, x is in the domain of the square root guy if we have corresponding points on the green graph. Over here, well, the square root of 0 is 0. When x squared minus 9 is 0, this radicand is 0. 
the square root of zero is zero. Remember that that y equals x squared minus nine will have the same x-intercepts as y equals the square root of x squared minus nine. These guys have the same real zeros. They have the same x-intercepts. They share the same x-intercepts. That's true for negative three zero and for positive three zero. They share the same x-intercepts. They're zero at the same time for the same values of x. Again, on the red graph, on the red parabola, when the y-coordinates are negative, we're trying to take the square root of a negative number. That's no good. These values of x near zero will not be in the domain of the square root guy because the radicand will be negative in value. Over here, again, the square root of zero is zero. That's cool. And over here, for these values of x, we're getting positive values for y. That is x squared minus nine. Therefore, the radicand is positive here. We're good. So again, what are the valid x-coordinates for the green graph? When the y-coordinates on the red graph, the values of the radicand are either positive or zero. Now, you might ask, well, wait. What if we don't have a quadratic? What if we have a cubic or a fourth degree or a fifth degree? Well, then I hope you paid attention this chapter. Then the question is, can you graph the corresponding bowl or snake? using the methods of this section, of this chapter. And then you want to know, well, can you find the zeros? Whoops. Okay. Graph, bowl, or snake. Okay. Uh, find the real zeros, which correspond to the x-intercepts, okay, like we did over here, negative three and three. The real zeros corresponded to the x-intercepts. For a parabola, we know that uh, we're either going to have a uh, bouncing situation, right? or we have two distinct x-intercepts. Or maybe we don't have any x-intercepts. That could happen too, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so here we have two distinct x-intercepts. All right. Uh, we have cuts in both cases. Uh, if we had something like this, it would be a bounce. Right. Uh, if you know the factorization. Find the factorization, and then you can figure out things like cuts and bounces. Does the graph cut at an x-intercept, or does it bounce? Okay, over here, we cut at both the x-intercepts. Sometimes you just bounce. Sometimes you have like a flying parabola or something, or bowl, uh, and there are no x-intercepts whatsoever. <laughs> all right. Oh, by the way, sometimes the uh, solution set will be all real numbers or the empty set. That's often the case if you get a parabola that doesn't have in intercepts, x-intercepts. All right. So the problem method, or just in general, the graphing method, where you're graphing y equals the radicand. If you've paid attention to this chapter, this can go very fast. Imagine me not talking. You're just looking at the notes. Imagine me not talking. <laughs> Next, we'll look at more numerical methods, which you may often use in calculus. And also, these extend well to rational functions in general.